E C O, Echo, what it do. Our online community is budding and blossoming. It is growing exponentially. And I am super excited that you get an opportunity to be a part of our online community. Look, I need you to connect with somebody. Go ahead and type in the chat what you're believing God for. We're about to go into the sanctuary. We're about to go into service. And it is going to be amazing. Even though you're not here in the sanctuary, I believe that you can still engage. Your faith can still engage even online. All right, go ahead, participate. Make sure you're connecting with somebody, and I'll see you all after the service. Good evening, Echo. How are y'all doing? I have not seen y'all in a whole week, but you know what? I don't want to see y'all on camera view. Later on this year, I've been saying this now for three weeks, we want to meet you in person right here at Embassy City. If you did not get the chance to register for a new partner orientation, you're too late for April. But our May registration is open and that class will be on May 1st, May 8th, and May 15th, three Wednesdays back to back. So head over to the Church Center app now and register for our May class because we wanna see you there. But guess what else we have coming up in May? Our amazing apostle is He's so creative. He's come up with this show and it's called The Destiny Experience. So it's an immersive show that is gonna include theater, dancing, singing, and most importantly, the word of God. So if you are available May 24th at 7 p.m. right here at your home church, like this, your church, we want you to go to destinyexperience.com right now destinyexperience.com. If someone could even post it in the chat, destinyexperience.com. May 24th at 7 p.m. This is going to be something you do not want to miss. And because I am so passionate about Echo and our online partners, all of our partners in the church, but particularly you today, because you don't get to experience everything that we get to experience here in the house. That's just being transparent. I am going to bless one person with one VIP ticket. So that's saving you $75. So if you are interested in flying here to Atlanta to experience the Destiny Experience Tour, I am personally gonna purchase one VIP ticket today and I am gonna give it to all of our online leaders um, to give to any Echo person that has shown interest in coming to Atlanta. VIP ticket. That means you're going to get VIP parking. So if you get a rental car or Uber, tell that Uber to pull up in my VIP spot. That's my spot. Pull it up, pull it up. You're going to get VIP seating. And guess what? VIP merch. All of that for free because I'm going to pay for it. <laughs> so head over to the Destiny Experience because we want to see our Echo family in the building. So we're gonna jump right into it. It is week three of Honor Intelligence, and I'm so excited that you keep returning because we want to enforce honor in the kingdom of God. Honor is the kingdom key, as I said last week, to unlock those things that God has for you. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for peace. We thank you, Lord, for love. We thank you, Lord, for clarity as we enter week three. We thank you, Lord, for the tools and the resources that you have been imparting into us over the past three weeks, God, so that we can learn to honor and see people how you see them in Jesus' name. Amen. So week three, let's go ahead and go all the way back and do a recap because there might be some people here tonight that ain't been here the past two weeks. <laughs> So we started off with what is honor? Honor is a high respect, great esteem for a person. What is honor from a verb? Honor is to give special recognition or regard to someone, right? So we first want to establish that. What is honor? To, high, to have high esteem for a person. How do we honor God? First week, we talked about Exodus 20. Chapter 20, verse 7, where it says not to use the Lord's name in vain. 
Another way to honor God is not by misusing his name. We also went on to talk about honoring our parents. How do we honor our parents? Pastor Tanya, how do we honor someone that has done us wrong? You speak well of them, you respect them, and you obey them. But remember, if your parents or anyone is having you or asking you to do anything that is going against what? His word, his instructions. All this is is God instructions for us. Then you don't have to do it. You do not have to obey anything that is going to be contrary to the word of God. Then we went on to say, how do we honor God without honoring his people? First Peter 2, 17, honor all people, not just the people we like, not just the people we think were funny, not just the people that's in our inner circle, but we have to honor the people that wrongfully accuse us, that lie about us, gossip about us, don't like us. We still have to honor them, right? Then last week, we went to talk about how to honor our leaders. So we all know in Genesis 39, Joseph was a leader, right? So we talked about how he went from being a slave, from his brother selling him, to being a prisoner, him being wrongfully accused by Potiphar's wife, right? Talking about she tried, he tried to sleep with her. Girl, ain't nobody wants you. You tried to sleep with him. To then being a ruler in Egypt, all because he did what? Honored. He honored his master. He honored his master by number one, by not sleeping with his wife. Y'all see me looking at that camera? He honored his master by not sleeping with his wife. Okay? So those are all things of honor that we want to discuss. But today topic is going to be honor without intelligence is a disaster. Honor without intelligence is a disaster. So you can have honor, but you need to have honor intelligence and ministry intelligence to know how, when to honor or to say a thing. So Romans um, chapter 12, verse 10 says, be the best at showing honor to each other. Be the best at showing honor to each other. We want to be the best at everything else. We want to be the best at social media. We want to be the best dress. We want to be the, the person that shows up that has the most jokes in the room. But can we be the best at showing each other honor? That is what it's about. We want to be the best at showing people honor. First Timothy 5.17. That whole book, I love Timothy and I love Corinthians because they are really showing us the importance of, of having influence and using it in the right way as far as leadership. So 1 Timothy 5, 17, I'm going to read it in three different versions for you today. The King James Version says, let the elders that rule well, let the elders that rule well, not let the elders that rule sometime, not let the elders that rule when they want to show up, that rule well be counted worthy of not just one, but double honor. That means two, especially those who labor with them in the word and doctrine. It said double honor. So it means all I got to do is just rule well, lead well, show up well, show up on time, honor my leaders, honor my assignment, and I'm going to get double honor. Sign me up. Sign me up right now. Somebody put in the comments, sign me up. The NSB version says the elders who lead well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. Same thing, different version. Then we're going to go down to the Passion Bible for all my Passion Bible readers. It says the pastors who lead the church well should be paid well. That means to help them get paid well, you have to tithe. <laughs> Tithing is a part of honor. It says they should be paid well. When I read that in the Passion Bible and I read the New King James, I said, what? They should be paid well. They should receive double honor for faithfully preaching and teaching the revelation of the word of God. So let's talk about that. Tithing is in the Old Testament. 
we've heard it's been great debates over tithings in the Old Testament. It's not in the New Testament. It's a law. Should we still be abiding that? Here at Embassy City, we believe in tithing. We believe in giving. Old Testament, New Testament, it is still the word of God. And the word of God is our foundation on how we live our daily life. So if the word of God says Malachi 3.10, it don't matter if it's the New Testament, Old Testament, the Futuristic Testament, it still says to give. We should be a cheerful giver. All right. So we believe in tithing. Intelligence. The definition of intelligence is the ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. The ability to acquire and apply knowledge and skills. So you can be intelligent, but being intelligent does not equate to honor. You could be honorable. But having honor intelligence, you may not do that at all times. So let me give you a clear example of honor intelligence. Honor intelligence is knowing how to read a room. When your leader walks in a room, you greet them. Just the same as when someone, when you walk into someone's house, you greet them. Having honor intelligence is being able to discern situations and being able to respond to those situations in a godly manner. So there may be times where you feel like somebody may need to get the business from you. <laughs> they done made you mad and I'm about to give them the business. But you got to do a heart check to say, what's my motive? Why do I feel like I want to check this per person in this atmosphere and in this environment? That's when Honor intelligence should kick in and ministry intelligence should kick in. You know why? Because if Holy Spirit dwells in you, Holy Spirit should be able to check you just like that. And the wink of an eye and say, you know what, Pastor Tanya? You're wrong. Your motive for wanting to do a said thing is wrong. Your motive for wanting to give them a piece of your mind is wrong. Your motive for wanting to tell them what they did X, Y, and Z five years ago is wrong. But in order to have Holy Spirit, you got to spend time with the Father. <laughs> so Holy Spirit don't just drop up and be like, I'm going to dwell in the heart of Pastor Tanya. No, I have to chase and run after Abba Father, sit at his feet. Allow him to speak to me. Allow his word to get in my heart. So when they say, write it, the word on a tablet of your heart, Proverbs, you have to write that on your heart. Because if God's word, Jesus, is not embedded in your heart, dishonor is going to come out every time. Lies and deceit is going to come out every time. Confusion is going to come out every time. So having intelligence, being smart, does not equate to honor because in order to have honor holy spirit has to indwell in you holy spirit will teach us what to say when to say how to say it and who to say it to teach us what to say how to say when to say it and who to say it to so you can have a great idea something you may be talking about may be very true but honor intelligence is knowing when to bring it up. So if my great leader, Apostle Brian Meadows, was to walk into this room right now in the middle of my recording, honor intelligence will say, greet him. Hello, Apostle, how are you doing? But he has put me on an assignment. So my assignment at this moment is to you. So I have to get back to you. Right now, I'm honoring the Echo community by teaching them about honor intelligence, right? So my assignment is to keep at task. That's called having the skills and ability to discern a room. Making decisions when you are angry or bitter can be a disaster. So my leaders, now I'm talking to y'all. If you go to any church, embassy church, bedside Baptist church, wherever you belong, Making decisions when you are angry or bitter can be a disaster. 
Our responsibility is to lead people and lead them well. So we're going back to 1 Timothy 5.17. You are going to receive double honor for being faithful in your preaching and your teaching. Let's throw out preaching. When you're leading, you're teaching people to what? Follow Christ. They're not following you. The end goal should be to follow Christ, right? And whatever organization that you have, whatever end goal that you're trying to achieve. So you want to be able to let people know they don't want to just honor their leaders in private, but they want to honor their leaders in public too. You know, one thing that scares Pastor Tanya, this is a, I'm very, very scared and weary of people that show a lack of respect and dishonor in private, but yet alone public. When you're publicly dishonoring leaders, I, that, that's just not my cup of tea. <laughs> I can't get with it. I don't know how to respond to it. I can't get with it. I can't get with you. All I can do is just intercede, stay in the gap, say, Lord, forgive them for they know what, not what they do. And I pray, Lord, that they begin to have a heart of honor. And I believe, believe and pray that their um, motives begin to be integral so that they can lead other people to be honorable. But people that publicly dishonor, y'all, I'm scared of y'all. Y'all, y'all make me weary. Y'all make me, y'all make me itch because it's a dangerous life to live. So getting back to my point, leaders, when you're making decisions for your team or for your organization and you're doing it out of spite and you're doing it out of anger or you're doing it because this is what I wanted to do. I didn't want to do what the leader told me to do because I don't want to be honorable in that sense. I want to lead in the way I want to lead. That's being dishonorable. Being a leader is not being in charge of people. It is transforming people. Your responsibility as a leader is to transform the people that you lead and lead them into a way that's going to be pleasing to the Lord. In order to do that, you leader have to be honorable. I don't want to, I don't, I ain't following nobody that is not honorable to their leader. So my leader is Pastor Anna Pringo. She is the worship arts leader. Her leader is Pastor Christopher Williams. His leader is Apostle Brian Meadows. So you see how it's a chain? It's a chain, right? If Pastor Anna publicly dishonored Pastor Chris, who's the executive pastor over Embassy City, I'm no longer... It's just going to be a different lens. I'm going to be seeing out of this lens. <laughs> a dirty lens because I can't follow someone who does not honor leadership. And then if Pastor Chris publicly, privately dishonored apostle, I'm going to be looking at you out of a dirty lens because how can I follow a leader that does not show honor to their own leader? So just remember that. You see me looking under my glasses? I'm going to be looking at you like this under the side eye because it's hard to follow a leader that does not have honor and respect for their leader. Everybody has a leader. Apostle leader is who he answered to. Echo, do y'all know? Bishop Brady. <laughs> so he has someone to answer to, okay? Everybody has a leader. Always remember that. I encourage you today, leaders, to forgive, to release, and let go of any past trauma that is impacting your ability to lead God's people and to lead them well. As leaders, we're not showing God honor if we're leading people straight to the pit of hell. And what do I mean by that? We're showing them how to dishonor because we don't honor our leader. So the people that follow us are going to feel like they don't have to honor those leaders and they don't have to honor you. But the funny thing is we always want people to honor us, but we don't want to honor other people. I'm going to just let that sit. If you're in the chat, put honor your leaders. It's that simple to show respect, to be kind to them and speak well of them. That is what the Bible tells us to do. It is that simple, right? 
So I encourage you to forgive, release, let it go. It happened five years ago. Let it go. Many of us cannot show honor to people that have hurt us because we don't give people the chance to evolve. Let's talk about that. There has been leaders in history, including myself. I may have not led in the best way. I may have not done everything right when it comes to leading a team. But you know who helped me? God and Holy Spirit. As you begin to dig deep, and I keep using this, into the word of God, this is going to give you the foundation on how to lead. This is going to give you the tools and resources on how to have patience with people, how to love people, how to lead in excellence. It's going to give you all of that. So as you begin to grow in your walk, guess what? You begin to evolve. You evolve as a leader and you evolve as a person. So when and Whenever anyone begins to lead, they're not going to know everything day one. And as followers, we should not put that burden on people to know everything the first day that they start leading. That's not honorable. It's not. We should not expect that and hold people accountable to that. People grow. So if someone, including myself, <laughs> has done you wrong, showed you any past trauma as a leader, if you felt like you've been abused by any leader, I want you to look at them today. On April 18, 2024, I want you to say, how has that person evolved today? Is that person still the same person that I met in 2020? If they are not, it is time to let it go. We want you to see people how God sees them. So God has already forgiven them for their sins. So are you putting yourself higher than God? Because you're still holding on to that and you're no God, nor do you have a hell or a heaven to put one person in. So why are you still holding on to things that Abba has already wiped the slate clean from? Oh, Jesus. I bind the devil of holding on to past traumas in Jesus name. Please know that that is a tactic from the enemy. He wants to use that to keep you locked into bondage. The enemy does not want you to have the kingdom key, the kingdom key of honor. He doesn't want you to honor people. He wants you to keep the giftings that God has placed inside of you, that the world is supposed to be seeing the leadership opportunities that God wants you to go forth with. He wants to keep that locked up. The quickest way to keep that locked up is by dishonoring your leaders. So I encourage you today to allow people to evolve. People have grown in God just the same way you have grown in God and we've given you grace. So now we want you to give leaders grace, allow people to evolve. That ain't the same leader you met four years ago, shorty. That ain't the same leader you met four years ago. That person has grown. So give people the opportunity to show their growth. Give people the opportunity to show God. Oh, that's kingdom key right there. Because that's what they're doing. They're able to show the word that God is able to take a little old me, a little old sinner, a little old leader that used to abuse people, a little old leader that didn't used to show up on time, a little old leader that didn't show commitment, a little old leader that wasn't honorable to people. God took that person, turned them around, transformed them from the inside out, grew them in the word of God. And now that person shows up better than before. So stop holding people in captivity in your mind and release them. Oh my God, that was so passionate. Allow people to evolve. As you allow people to evolve, you're going to see that, oh man, it's easy to honor this person. It's easy to show them honor in private and public, okay? So we're gonna move right along. How does God want us to show up as a leader? He wants to show us to show up to fulfill our assignment. He wants us to show up to where we're not leading people to us, we're leading people to him. So whenever you're leading people, the objective and the goal is always to him. Here at Embassy City, Christ is the center, not leaders. Christ is the center and people are the priority. So echo, 
I'm telling you today, I am making this vow to you as the leader of our new partner team, as a leader in our connections department, I'm making a vow to make you my priority, not just the people here in the building, but you online because you come faithfully, you so faithfully, you show up every week to a church that you may have not even been to when there's probably a thousand churches right in your city, but you show up here. So I honor you. You are not a afterthought. If you've ever felt like as an online member, I'm overlooked, I'm misused, no one calls me. This is what I want you to do. I'm going to make this vow to you right now. Get out paper and pen. If someone can put it in the chat, email Pastor Tanya. I'm here for you. My email is connections, C-O-N-N-E. C C I O N S <laughs> connections at embassy church ATL.com connections at embassy church ATL.com connections at embassy church ATL.com email me let me know your desires let me know your needs let me know as a pastor how can I serve you as an online member Okay, I am making that vow to you right now because I can't be up here teaching leadership and teaching honor if I'm not honoring the people that we're leading here at this church. So if you feel like you have been misused or used or abused in the past by a leader, I challenge you this week to look at that leader now. On April 18th, how has Pastor Tanya evolved? How has pastor so-and-so evolved? How has my mother evolved? How has my boss evolved? And I promise you, God is going to be able to open the windows of heaven for you. Because once you release, just know forgiveness is not for you. It ain't for them. It is for you. It is for you so that you can live a healthy, thriving life and learn to honor those that have even been mean or misused you. It's easy to honor people that have been great to us. That's easy. That doesn't take a rocket scientist. But when you really get into the nitty gritty, it's honoring the ones that have not honored you in the past. So I challenge you today to honor every single person. Write down every person name that you feel like have wronged you. Call them. Say, you know what? I forgive you. And I am releasing the issue or the trauma or the pain that we had because I honor you. And because I honor Abba first, I honor you because you are also his child. Okay? I definitely want that to be your homework for next week. So next week is the last week on honor intelligence. So when I come back, I'm going to be like, who names did you write down? Did you contact them? Did you call them? Maybe you feel like, I don't want to call them. An email. Email them. Let them know. I forgive you. And I'm so sorry that I held you in captivity for all this time. I'm so sorry that I treated you different for all this time. I'm so sorry that I dishonored you in public and in private. Let me give you one thing about honoring, dishonoring someone in public. We've all heard the saying on Instagram, I need you to give that same energy. Forget energy. My energy is the Holy Spirit. So the same way that you dishonor someone in public, you need to give a, a public apology and honor. You need to honor them in public. The same way that you dishonored someone privately, then you go to them in private. But you can't be big and bad in public by dishonoring people and then when it's time to humble yourself. So let me go back to 1 Timothy because they were just talking about this. Humbling yourself as a leader. I have it right here. The elders who lead well, in order to lead well, you have to be humble. So you have to humble yourself. So being big and bad in public, But then being a wuss when it comes to apologizing. <laughs> no, nah, you big and bad. As the young people would say, bring that same energy. 
We want that same apology to be just as great as the dishonor was great, okay? So when it comes to apologizing to people in public, you should be able to do that because God gives every person, you should be humble. You should be walking in humbleness. You should be walking in meekness. So your homework for today, at least three people, at least three of people that have mistreated you. I want you to write their names down. If you have their phone number, I want you to call them and I want you to release them. I want you to say, you know what? I release you from all those past hurt and traumas. It may not mean that you're going to be in a relationship with that person, but by you forgiving them, that's the first step to honor. By you calling them and acknowledging the situation, it may have been you in the wrong. That is the first step to honor. When I say you're going to feel so good after this conversation, it is going to be like a weight being lifted off of your shoulder so that you can live in peace, so that you can sleep in peace, and so that you can honor in peace. So until week Four, which is next week. Guess what we're going to be learning about? Honoring God in our relationships and our marriage. <laughs> Honoring God in our relationships and in our marriage. But before we can honor God in our marriage, I want you to let go of all the past boyfriend, girlfriend, mama and daddy stuff. Why do I want you to let go of that? Because I don't want you taking that filth into your marriage. You need to be healed and whole. Healed and whole. Do not make your past trauma your spouse traumas because now they got to deal with you. <laughs> Jesus mighty God. So apologize, release. Next week, we're going to be talking about honoring God in our marriage and we're going to be wrapping up honor intelligence. Don't forget all of our new partners, go to the Church Center app because y'all have missed April deadline and we want to see you in the May new partner class. Don't forget, also, head over to destinyexperience.com. Get your ticket. I got one VIP ticket for my Echo community. So as we head out, I am going to release a prayer over you that God gives you the courage and the strength to be able to apologize, to be able to publicly honor to be able to publicly apologize, give them the wisdom and the understanding, Lord, to be able to speak in a level of authority like they've never had before. We pray, Lord, that the spirit of fear and the spirit of intimidation will be broken off of them right now, that chains will be released off of them right now, that any bondage that anybody has held them in will be broken off right now in Jesus' name. Echo, I love you. I'm here for you. I am one of your pastors. I love you. And until next week, I will see you then. Have a blessed and great week. Wasn't that crazy? I pray that you enjoyed service wherever you watched from. I pray that you were blessed by today's service. This is a phenomenal opportunity for you to go ahead and connect. Make sure you like, make sure you share it, make sure you subscribe. And I would love for you to become a part of our online community, a part of our online church. You don't have to be in Atlanta, you don't have to be in the sanctuary, but you can still connect and be a part of our community and be a part of the vision, be a part of what God is doing right here in the city of Atlanta. So look, if you want to be a partner, go ahead, type in the chat, commit, connect. I want to join. I want to be a partner and I can't wait to see you a part of our community growing, developing and becoming all that God has called you to become. Connect today and I'll see you all very, very soon.